Hey there Tesla fans, Aaron Rath here with Rats Tesla and today's video is part two of our screen that we got from Handshow. I want to talk about it a little bit, show you a little bit about it and uh, go from there. But before we get too much into the screen, I do have to be honest about something and we'll get into that right after this. Thanks for watching Rats Tesla. All right, as I said, um, I wanted to talk about something real quick before we dive into the uh, screen itself. And that is the fact that, you know, just like any electronical device, there are going to be issues. And my screen was one of those screens that had issues. But I will tell you that the customer service at Handshow has been amazing. SAR, my contact over there, has been absolutely on top of things. My screen would only connect to Apple CarPlay about 50% of the time. If you got out of the car and got back in within the 5-10 minute range, it would not connect back to Apple CarPlay. So I was following up with, with Handshow and they set up a group chat on WhatsApp and we talked through it a little bit. We verified that it was installed correctly. So if you didn't see the installation video, I'll put it up above a link to it. Um, check out that video. It talks about the installation, uh, but we verified that it was installed correctly. And what we came up with was that the firmware and the the um, MPU um, software needed to be updated. So it was super easy. Unfortunately, I did it last night about 11 o'clock and I was not in my right mind and I did not film it, but I'm going to talk you through it because it was super easy. Um, basically, what happened was Handshow sent me a link to a Google document, and in that Google document, it had a file to download. It was a RAR file. I had to unzip it, and then there were two different files in there. There was an update file and a .bin file. I put both of those on this memory stick. It's a one gig stick that was plenty, and then I plugged that stick into a um, an adapter that goes from USB-A to USB-C. And that is because on the screen, on the back side of the screen here, I'm gonna see if I can show it to you. Um, but on the back side of the screen here, I'm not being able to find it. Let me see here. Uh, well, but basically, well, maybe you can see that right there. Basically on the back side of the screen here, there's a little opening that you open up and you plug in this USB-C plug and then the screen goes right to an update screen. You hit update, it runs through its thing, it restarts and then it says, do you wanna update the MPU? You say yes, you update that and it restarts and voila. And just like that, my screen works perfectly. I have no issues whatsoever. Every time I get in the car now, it connects to CarPlay and everything is good to go. So now let's take a look at this screen and what it does for you. So as we look at this screen, first off, let's look at how awesome this looks with the yoke that I got from Handshow as well. I do have a link down below to Handshow's website. You can use my discount code Rats Tesla and get a nice discount on their items to include the screen that you see here and the um, the yoke that uh, I, I installed as well. I, I have a link to that video. You can check out that video and, and watch it. Uh, see if I can get rid of a little glare there. I close my garage door, that does get rid of the glare. So let's take a look real quick at this screen. So first off, I have it set up so the scroll wheel, you can see, I keep my hand in, as I scroll up and down, it goes back and forth between um, full screen, uh, helping me out and driver's stuff, and then the car play on half screen you can actually set the car play up so it goes full and partial like that stick with me and i'll show you that in just a minute but let's talk about this screen real quick over here on the right side is a charge meter and a power meter so it's really the same thing that you would see up top here if you were driving but it's a lot easier to see 
down here below you have a trip meter and that is reset to zero every time you stop so it's the immediate drive that you're on so if you go on a drive and you go 150 miles that'll say 150 miles when you stop and turn your car off that will reset to zero Below that is the odometer of the car. Uh, you can see mine has 12,780 miles on it. So I'm about uh, uh, 220 miles from 13,000. And then the, below that is the range in miles, 160 miles. That same range is on the other side on the dial that has the speed on it, only in percentage. So it's saying 55% is 160 miles. Across the bottom, you have the time, you have park reverse neutral drive, your gear selector, and the outdoor temperature. Then across the top, you have um, your bright light indicator, you have blinkers right there and right there. So if I put the blinker on, you can see it flashing. Um, you have your light headlights, um, and then you have your seat belt. Uh, someone needs to be seat belted, and on the right side is the hold functionality. Now, here's the cool thing. If we swipe over from the right, you've got your three buttons, one to show the gauges, one to show the car play, and one to show the settings. So let's walk through the settings real quick. You can pick your car, Model 3, Model Y. You can pick your units of temperature, Celsius or Fahrenheit. Um, you can change this, CarPlay or Android Auto, and you can have it normal or full screen. I'll show you full screen real quick. You hit confirm, it'll reset, and then it'll bring up Apple CarPlay again and reconnect it to it. And so let's see uh, what the full screen looks like in Apple CarPlay. I gotta wait for my phone to connect back to it. <laughs> but it, it's it's a lot different going from that what they call normal screen to full screen um, and of course now I oh there we go now it connected so now you can see that it's got the full screen on there for Apple CarPlay as opposed to having uh, what they call normal screen which is basically from here over and I'll show you that in just a minute but it's from here over is your car driver position and then the left half side of the screen is CarPlay. If you've ever used CarPlay before, this is exactly, it's exactly CarPlay. I mean, I have CarPlay in my wife's Volkswagen and this is exactly, it's it's CarPlay. So like I can see here, I have Waze up here, I have Search, I have my last, uh, my music, and then I have, because I have uh, my garage door, opener connected through my phone it shows it right here and it shows no response because it hasn't done anything but i can go back to the full and check out all the apps that are available in carplay um, as i switch through those you can you know you can bring up a better route planner so if you want to make a trip and and do it that this way versus on the main screen you can do that as well or you can um do whatever you want. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do here. You can bring Waze up on that full screen and have it in front of you. And then you can use a scroll wheel to go back and forth between the two. There's so many things that you can do. I am a Sirius XM listener. So I love the fact that I can bring up my Sirius XM and bring up my channels and and, and listen to my music right here through Sirius XM instead of having to connect, instead of having to connect my phone uh, to the, oh, I had to stop that. Instead of having to connect my phone to the screen and then try and maneuver through to get stuff, it's just so much easier to connect it on here. So I really like that. Now, a big key here is, and I, I touched on this on my video for setting this thing up, but a big key is to make sure that when you set up your Bluetooth, you have your Bluetooth set up so that it connects to the BT Tesla automatically. I make that my priority device, and then when I get going, it automatically connects to that, and then my Apple CarPlay, my phone is connected to this, and then this is connected to this, and it plays through the speakers, no problem. So now let's go back and let's look real quick at the Apple CarPlay in normal mode, because that's the mode that I like to have it in. 
So Apple CarPlay, normal. Now it's gonna restart and it's gonna take a few moments to reconnect. So we'll be patient here. This is what we see when it restarts. When it comes up, it'll come up in speedometer mode and that's what, that's what we're on right here. And if we scroll the scroll wheel, you can see the CarPlay, the smartphone connection guide to walk you through connecting while the car and the phone do their CarPlay thing while the, the screen here sends the data or sends the request to the phone. Now you can see that it connected CarPlay. And this is the mode that I like to run in. I like to run in what they call normal screen so that I can have my speedometer here and my mileage and my battery and everything there. And then I can still have CarPlay on the left side so I can have my my um, music up on the left side and if I really want to I can scroll wheel back to full screen now one key here is that if you are in navigate on autopilot or full self-drive the scroll wheel does not work to scroll through this uh, screen it will be stuck on the screen that you're on because the right scroll wheel is then used for navigate on autopilot or FSD so if you're going to do that you want to make sure that you are on the proper screen that you want to be on because you cannot switch back and forth without coming out of those areas one last thing to show you before we go through this and I talked through this in my in my uh, install video but let's talk about this real quick on the on this video because there's a couple things I've learned. First off, you can change the color of your car so you can see I have a Y. This middle part is a touch screen so it scrolls through. You can see the safe follow distance is set to two. And it's, as I go through and change it, it changes on there as well. So three, four, we're gonna take it back to two. One more scroll gets us gets us our doors if i were to open a door it would glow red to show you which door open and then this one is the tire pressure it shows in bars but if you press it if you touch it it'll change it to psi the problem is is that it always goes back to bar so you need to change it to psi every time so every time you drive you could easily open that up flip it to psi or flip it to your tire pressure put it on psi and monitor your tire pressure i know that was a big thing for a lot of people as they as they changed as tesla changed their software to v11 so this is a great alternative to monitor your tire pressure Thanks for watching this video, a quick dive into the screen from Handshow. They have three different versions of this. They have a 10.25 inch, and you can get that in a couple different operating systems. They have a 8.8 .8 inch. Again, you can get that in a couple different operating systems. The one that I have is the nine inch, and it only comes in the Linux operating system. You will have to tell them which chipset you have, either Intel or AMD, and let them know at order. But I went with the nine inch one because it's, it's, it's the right size for the yoke and it has a much smaller bezel it's the newest one that they've just built it's linux software so it's it's super reliable linux if you know software is a very very good software base a lot of big companies use it i'm in the aerospace industry we use linux in a lot of our stuff so it's a it's a good software piece so I highly, highly, highly recommend getting this. For one, you always see a bunch of videos about people, I want CarPlay, or you can get CarPlay by downloading this Mirror app, or doing this and doing that. All of that is dumb. I tried the Mirror app, it didn't work. It only functioned about 50% of the time. It was super laggy. I highly recommend that you save your money and do not download that app. But purchasing this is a good thing sure it's over four hundred dollars close to five hundred but for those that want the screen in front of them they want to be able to see their miles per hour and they want carplay this is a super alternative and oh by the way how cool does that look with the yoke and the screen all right there i absolutely love the way that looks so if you're in the market for the screen go ahead and follow the link down below make sure you use my code at checkout that'll get you a nice discount again that code is rats tesla um, while you're there get yourself a yoke get the yoke and the screen set it up the same way and you are 
absolutely going to love it. I promise you are going to love this screen. It is just very, very good. That'll do it for today's video. Thanks for watching as always. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button, drop a comment below if you've got something else that you want to throw in about this video. And as always, get out, go drive your Tesla, be safe, have fun, and be kind to each other. There's no reason to be a big jerk to each other in the time and, and everything that's going on. It's just a, a good time to be nice to each other. As always, thanks, have fun, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, Rats Tesla.